Hey, welcome back to YA Unboxing. It's Rachel at the Prosper Community Library, and it's been a while since we've done one of these videos. I'm so excited to share with you today some of the new things that we have here in the library. This past week has been like Christmas. We've gotten so many new YA books. Um, I'm just gonna highlight a few of those today and uh, tell you about them in case you are interested. But we have so, so many new books so you guys come check them out. I can't go through all of them. There's just no way. So let's jump right into it. Let's see which book we are going to talk about first. And it is Wakers by Orson Scott Card. You know, Orson Scott Card from the ever popular Ender's Game. All right. So let's see what Wakers is all about. It says Laz is a sidestepper, a teen with the incredible power to jump his consciousness to alternate versions of himself in parallel worlds. All his life, there was no mistake that a little sidestepping couldn't fix. Until Laz wakes up one day in a cloning facility on a seemingly abandoned earth. Laz finds himself surrounded by hundreds of other clones, all dead, and he quickly realizes that he too must be a clone of his original self. Laz has no idea what happened to the world he remembers as vibrant and bustling only yesterday and he struggles to survive in the barren wasteland wasteland he's now trapped in but the question that haunts him isn't why he was created but instead who woke him up and why there's only a single bright spot in laz's new life one other clone appears to still be alive although she remains asleep deep down laz believes that this girl holds the key to the mysteries plaguing him. But if he wakes her up, she'll be trapped in this hellscape with him. This is one problem that Laz can't just sidestep his way out of. All right, so if you are interested in some sci-fi, that sounds like a good one, you guys. Be sure to check out Wakers. All right, up next we have No Beauties or Monsters by Tara Gojin. And I really like this cover. It's really pretty. All right, let's see what this one is all about. It says something's wrong in 29 Palms. Riley hasn't been back to the US military base in 29 Palms since her father died. She left a lot of memories out there, buried in the sand of the Mojave Desert. Memories of her dad, her old friends, Nathan and Lily, and most of all, of her enigmatic grandfather who cut ties with Riley's family before he passed away. But her mom's new work assignment has sent them to 29 Palms again, and now Riley is in the one place she never wanted to return to. At least her old friends are happy to welcome her back. Well, some of them anyway. It turns out Lily is gone, vanished into the desert. To make matters worse, there are whispers around town of a mysterious killer on the loose. But it isn't just 29 Palms that feels frightening. There's something wrong with Riley too. She's seeing things she can't explain, visions of monstrous creatures that stalk the night. Somehow, it all seems to be tied to her grandfather and the cabin he left behind. Riley wants the truth, but she doesn't know if she can trust herself. Are the monsters in her head truly out there, or could it be that the deadliest thing in the desert is Riley herself? All right, that one sounds really good if you are into mysteries, um, it says things, um, Stranger Things, if you like are interested in stuff like that, Stranger Things, um, you might enjoy this book. All right. Okay, next we have Battle of the Bands. And this is actually, um, you can kind of see around the outside, a lot of different authors uh, came together to put this story together. So um, it says, get ready to rock. Uh, Singer-songwriter Raven is struggling to sort out her feelings for her best friend, Rod, and for his girlfriend, Kima. Guitarist Mina can feel her bandmates slipping away as college looms. Stage manager Lily is sick of disappearing into the background, while almost famous songwriter Steven isn't sure he's ready to retake the stage and to truly be seen. For many, the Raritan River High School Battle of the Bands is a once in a lifetime opportunity to perform on stage for their peers and maybe win a real recording session. 
For others, it's a too loud obligation or a chaotic test of their technological and organizational know-how. But for all, it's a chance to live a different kind of life from the one they usually live, if only for one night, if only for one song. All right, so that really leaves us hanging there. But um, it's like each chapter is by a different author and it all comes together to form one story. So it sounds pretty good. I like the cover of that one too. Um, so yeah, definitely if that's intriguing to you, pick it up. All right, next we have The Ones We're Meant to Find. And this is by Joan Key. Okay. It's been three years and 17 days since C woke up on the shore of an abandoned island. She has no idea how she came to be marooned or what her life was like before. She has only the rickety house by the sea, the android she built for company, and a single memory. Somewhere beyond the horizon, she has a sister, and it's up to C to escape the island and find her. A world away 16-year-old STEM prodigy, Casey, is also looking to escape from the science she once believed in and from her home. The eco cities, Earth's last unpolluted habitats, are meant to be a sanctuary for those from deserving lineages, for those committed to planetary protection. But instead, they're populated by people willing to do anything for refuge, even lie. After a series of man-made disasters rock the planet, Casey must decide if she's ready to use science to help humanity, even though it failed the people who mattered most to her. All right, so that sounds really, really good. Some science fiction, climate issues. Um, yeah, definitely pick that one up. I like the cover too. <laughs> And the last book that we're going to cover today is I Must Betray You by Ruta Zepetis. And let me tell you, Ruta Zepetis is one of my favorite authors. Um, Salt of the Sea, Between Shades of Grey. Um, she actually has a lot of good books. She writes historical fiction. So if you are into historical fiction, you're going to want to pick this one up. All right. So this says Romania, 1989. Communist regimes are crumbling across Europe. 17-year-old Christian Florescu dreams of becoming a writer, but Romanians aren't free to dream. They are bound by rules and force. Amid the tyrannical dictatorship of Nicolae Ceausescu in a country governed by isolation and fear, Christian is blackmailed by the secret police to become an informer. He's left with only two choices, betray everyone and everything he loves, or use his position to creatively undermine the most notoriously evil dictator in Eastern Europe. Christian risks everything to unmask the truth behind the regime, give voice to fellow Romanians, and expose to the world what is happening in his country. He eagerly joins the revolution to fight for change when time arrives, but what is the cost of freedom? All right, so history, um, historical fiction, I really love this, and like I said, if you are a historical fiction fan, definitely pick up this and any of Ruta Zepetis' books, okay? All right, well, that's gonna be it for this edition. Thanks so much for joining me, and we will see you soon.